Let's begin. Let's go live to Les Invalides, one of the most important uh, complexes in France. In fact, we won't start with live images. I believe those live image uh, associated from uh, Reuters have uh, just gone off screen, suggesting the two men are now uh, meeting at the Elysee Palace. We are looking at images, though, from just a short while ago. The visit, this is, of President Xi, the first in five years here in Paris, alongside President Macron. Pomp, ceremony uh, and, well... Tough, uh, tough trade talks and tough talks on war as well, because, well, China's seen as a key uh, partner of Russia. It talks about a no holds barred relationship between the two countries in the last two years. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the EU Commission chief, who met with both for talks earlier, said, uh, well, China can have a big role in influencing Russia to end the war in Ukraine. Well, let's hear first from what the Chinese president had to say a short while ago. The world today has entered a new period of turbulence and change as two important forces in the world, China and the EU should remain partners, adhere to dialogue and cooperation, deepen strategic communication, enhance strategic mutual trust, build strategic consensus and carry out strategic coordination so as to promote the steady and sound development of China-EU relations and make constantly new contributions to world peace and development. Okay, so statement that sounds like all sweetness and cherry pie, but behind it, as I mentioned, the Ukraine conflict and also EU concern that China is allegedly dumping cheap subsidies of electric vehicles in Europe. Let's get the context with that and the visit itself and bring in our reporter, James Andre, who's a seasoned Macron watcher and has been watching developments today. James, good to see you, good to talk to you. Bring us up to date first with the notable moments of the day. Yes, well, indeed, the uh, ceremony has taken place at uh, the Invalide. That was uh, just moments ago. It started around 3 p.m. And now both leaders are inside the Elysee Palace uh, having a bilateral talk. Now, this is a restrained one uh, with only a few people in the room. There'll be a larger one with the delegations just afterwards before the two men head off to the economic forum that's taking place at the Marini Theatre, which is right next door to here. You know, trade that has been really one of uh, the big central uh, pieces of these discussions this morning with indeed Ursula von der Leyen who was present this morning for a more European page of uh, these talks and discussions uh, very much uh, around the uh, problems of according to Europe China dumping electric vehicles, batteries, because indeed China's economy right now is slowing down. There is an overproduction. And here in Europe, well, uh, the leaders are very worried that indeed this might destroy the auto industry. And indeed, uh, China also retaliating with uh, some... Uh, inquiries into dumping there as well of um, brandy on its market as a retaliation move quite clearly squared at France in this specific case but clearly yes tough discussions when it comes to trade ongoing today and also Ukraine. And tra trade matters James we would talk about the dumping of electric vehicles. This is a market where China wants to dominate. Go back a few days we had Elon Musk the Tesla chief in Beijing asking for data uh, details, plans so it can allow it to use Tesla elsewhere, but China wants something in return. And we should also say that you know, China isn't just looking at France in this state visit, it's heading also uh, Xi Jinping to Hungary, to Serbia. Notably, one of its key, well, only European electric car production plants is in Hungary. Yes, it is. Well, there is a, there's also a, a, a Chinese plant planned in, in Spain. But yes, what the French would like is to see some Chinese investment here in France. But as it's been explained here uh, to us by the Elysee Palace, what we want is uh, what, what is requested by the French to the Chinese is some high-level production, some things which would be uh, cutting-edge technologically that could indeed help out France when it comes to uh, its uh, transition to a low-carbon economy. And this, of course, is very much a problem because, yes, France wants to equip itself with many uh, solar panels, but also uh, pro solar pro electric producing windmills. And that is also a market where, uh, according to the EU regulators, well, there is Chinese dumping. So very much a question of protecting this European industry at a time 
time where, yes, you know, as you were saying, China now, uh, well, BYD, which is one of its main car manufacturers, is, you know, the largest electric car manufacturer in the world. It has overtaken Tesla. Indeed, on battery technology, uh, well, the Chinese are very much cutting edge. All these specific domains where, uh, well, the European industry wants to develop. And as you were pointing out, yes, Hungary, indeed, there will be a visit after this one. And Serbia as well, countries uh, that are not as much as France, you know, at the core of uh, the EU, Serbia, which is openly pro-Russian. So, of course, this also sends mixed messages. Really interesting. James, if you can, stay with us, because I want to keep across developments. I also want to bring in Jean-Maurice Ripert, former French ambassador to China. Great to have you on France 24 this moment. And let's start, uh, Jean-Maurice, with your take, your assessment on what's going on right now, what's in it, you think, for China, and what do the French want to get out of this? I think it's a very critical moment. I think uh, we have to stress that. China is at a moment where they will, at one moment, have some choices to make, which could be slightly different from the ones they have made before. I think one of the uh, objectives of the French president and of the chairwoman of the commission is to try to um, make China and Xi Jinping understand that he's wrong in his support um, uh, to Russia in Ukraine especially with the armament uh, assistance that will create more and more uh, insecurity in Europe. And this is something we take very seriously. I'm not totally sure that the leadership in China has understood fully the range of fear and um, of the European people in facing the aggression of Russia against Ukraine uh, and the determination, the new determination of the Europeans to face that and to fight. I think China was used to some kind of benevolent attitude of the European Union countries, all trying to benefit from the uh, from the gigantic uh, Chinese market. And they have to understand that everything has a cost and it can, cannot continue as, as it was before. That there is no more business as usual with China possible. Mm. With all those violations of the WTO rules and the fact that China we have to build this strategic autonomy of the European Union, which China should not be afraid of, because these are the conditions for us to become a real partner to China. And I should set some context, because we'll talk at the moment about trade. You mentioned this, this key issue here. Now, this goes back to, this is Shenzhen. This is a, a, an area in China where it's become, well, 18 million people there. It's now the tech industry hub. The BYD is the big Chinese electric car manufacturer. They were a mobile battery company and now they are the dominant force in most of the world now, but is there a question here about perhaps Europe almost inadvertently enhancing China's ability because the great irony in Europe is you know the setting of free market rules stopping of you know the arms race of government subsidies and yet the idea of a level playing field if China can come in and there aren't these um, you know rules with free market on uh, cars they've got a, a plant in Hungary so they can actually deploy from Hungary and actually sell from Hungary. At the same time, they, they are heavily subsidising their use. So it's a serious issue, as you say, which could see, ultimately, European manufacturers, uh, electric vehicle companies massively losing out. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an old person. And for 50 years, I hear people explaining to me that in any case, the European Union is weak and we lose in face of this or that. I don't believe that for a moment. European Union is a very complex uh, innovation in terms of uh, organization in the world, and everything takes time. What is important right now is that we have collectively made the decision to make, a turn in, to, to make it a turning point and to organize ourselves. It will take a few years, of course, but China has to understand that we will not renounce. This is why we have decided to be able to screen the investments, that we are ready to tax whatever imports that seems to us unfair com compared to the rules of WTO. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget that China needs the European Union market. I mean, it's a market of what? 500 million inhabitants? Including this is the UK, yeah. If you, if you outside of the EU, 370 plus ah, UK and a few others, yes. In, uh, the, the European Union is the first economic and trade partner of China. Yeah. And by the way, also of the US and was it was the case for Russia before. The war. So, I mean, European, the Europeans have just to trust themselves and to start moving on 
slowly as usual, but steadily. I and wanna... I think the message yeah. that Mr. Macron and Mrs. von der Leyen wants to pass to Xi Jinping is that we have started to go this way and we will not stop. I want to ask you a brief last question about um, tech, and I want to ask you about Ukraine. And I say this because our former intelligence chief, and this brings it home to France 24 viewers, the importance here. He said this is the defining national security issue. High tech, chips, yes. silicon chips, that will define our future. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. And uh, we have to recognize that in terms of very high level technology, we are lagging behind the Americans. So as is China, by the way. This is the problem of China. In a way, we are also competitors and, and, and rival in terms of uh, the, the highest degree of, of technology. We are too dependent uh, from the American technology. And China tries to find partners to build some high level technology. We need to do the same and we uh, need to do the same as Europeans and yeah, as Europeans. You've been a, you know, as former ambassador, you've seen how China works, often plays the long game in terms of strategy geopolitically. Do you think on Ukraine, Emmanuel Macron talking about you know, influencing the Russians realistically can have any impact? We can hope that they will understand once again that arming Russia is getting them nowhere because Russia will not win its war in Ukraine. They have to understand that. This is possible. To hope that China will uh, assist, if I may say so, European efforts to convince the Russian uh, to go back home, why not? I have doubts, but it's worth trying. Jean-Marie, let's bring in James André, who just listening to you there, our reporter at the Elysee. James, talk us through the personal relationship and the importance of that and the two men off to the, the Pyrenees tomorrow and perhaps maybe personal politics could make a difference. Yes. Well, this is clear what's uh, being hoped for here at the Elysee Palace, and that's what we were told before this meeting, is that this sequence in the Pyrenees is very much for both men to have time together uh, without all the protocol around them, without all their entourage, where they can really just talk as men one to another. And what's at stake here and what's you know, the message that Emmanuel Macron is expected to convey is the fact that, yes, Ukraine is a key issue for the Europeans and for the French, that it is of national security importance, that it is something uh, that the French and Europeans will not be giving up on. And what he's trying to achieve, indeed, is for Xi Jinping to take a very firm engagement as to not sending weapons to uh, Russia, but also not uh, letting its companies, China, export goods that can be used on the battlefield. So we're talking what? We're talking we're talking drones, we're talking detection systems, we're also talking about uh, some heavy production tools such as uh, machine tools to produce armament that right now are being indeed, according to uh, the Elysee and to the European Union, shipped to Russia. Trade between Russia and, the, uh, and, and China has uh, leaped 25% last year, so that goes to show how much exchanges there are between both countries. And yes, indeed, uh, Xi Jinping can speak and have uh, some influence on uh, the, uh, Vladimir Putin, the Russian president. The question is, will he want to uh, speak to him? That obviously is not very obvious. Now, we have spoken to people here at the Elysee Palace who tell us, look, the idea is to put the idea in his head to show that the European Union and France are determined when it comes to Ukraine. And they hope that that will have some impact at an important stage, maybe later down, later down the line. But in uh, 2000, uh, I mean, last time both men met, uh, Xi Jinping and Emmanuel Macron, well, Xi Jinping did speak on the phone uh, to Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, who got a chance uh, to uh, air his concerns as to the situation and ask uh, for Chinese help. We'll see if there is, for example, a new contact between those two leaders in days to come. James, Andre, thank you for the context. Uh, Jean-Marie, final question to you. A lot of people might want to know, is he personable? How easy is he to know? President Xi, and do they have any personal rapport from last time between him and Emmanuel Macron? I can confirm to you that it's very difficult to know who in reality is Xi Jinping. Um, I think, you know, those private meetings and dinners with spouses and everything are very good, and it's a tradition now, but don't hope too much from this specific event within the, uh, the visit. I think what is very important to the Chinese is exactly what, what James said. 
you have to show that you are steady, you are standing firm on your values and on the direction you want to take. The message has to pass to Xi Jinping and he has to understand that we will not change the course we have decided to follow within the European Union, full support to Ukraine, no war, Russia has to go back home, and China should think twice in arming Russia in a war that Russia will not win. So it has to be repeated as often as possible. And I agree with James on another. It, it's very important to start talking with the CGP. It will take time, perhaps to infuse a little bit within his mind, uh, with his decision making, own making decision making process. But one day, I think he will he will remember what has been said in Europe to him. Jean-Maurice, pleasure to talk to you here on France 24. Jean-Maurice Repair, former French ambassador to China.